My name is Lydia Orahman. I'm a visual artist based between Barcelona and Algiers. I'm presenting at Fondation Louis Vuitton, part of Open Space Number 10, a film called Tassili, which is actually the first long film or moving image work that I've made in Tassili Najar, which is this um, national park. It's a plateau between Algeria and Libya. I think a lot of my practice has dealt with questions on belief and how belief is registered on the body. When I did my first kind of like scouting trip, that's when I met Ahmed for the first time and he took me on this first walk. You know, that's really when I started to think about or like the practice of belief and like making this journey as in like walking through this environment and walking through the space with someone taking you, you had to completely trust them and that was a way to kind of exercise this or like practice that question of belief. You know, there's never been a film that's been shot there. When we were there shooting the film and like putting equipment on donkeys and like going up the mountain and then walk, it just felt, the practice of that was just so bizarre. You know, it felt really kind of um, alien to that space. So I could really understand after shooting the film, like, of course, no one's done this before, you know. Unless you had like a helicopter, it would be so impossible. The premise of the film was to film these cave paintings. So we were really walking these routes to see groups of cave paintings. But these routes were also decided by um, the guides in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture and they had to kind of communicate with the military exactly where we would be going and how long for, you know, we couldn't deviate from that plan. I would say that the film was actually directed by um, the local guides and the Mini Ministry of Culture and the military. We moved through that space and the way that the audience in turn also moved through the film is really directed by the forces that allowed us to be there. For me, it's a really complicated work. It's definitely, like, has been the most difficult piece that I've produced. You know, when we went to shoot this film, it was the first time that foreigners have been allowed on the plateau for about 12 years. And that was, you know, a kind of feat in itself. It makes you question, like, why? It's by asking these questions you realise, like, how and why all of these kind of laws have been established. You know, we understood that previously there's been a lot of, like, journalists that come trying to kind of break stories on like arms trafficking, etc. So th this was one of the things that contributed to this, like no foreigners allowed kind of policy. I think when you're kind of dealing with a space that is so resistant, you become very aware of like what your position is, even making something like this and why, and like who does it serve, you know? I think what really began as like, for me personally was this fascination and just like, I was just so in awe of the fact that these paintings existed and that I could still, you know, we can understand what they're saying. They can still communicate across 12,000 years and still there's some way of understanding like what came before us, but that they're still here, you know? And then you start to question like, how has that remained for 12,000 years? And also like, what am I doing? What am I leaving behind, you know? Tassili has been cut into four sections and each section is scored by a different musician and I think each of them have very different ways of um, dealing with sound. So the first section was scored by Nicholas Jar. Nicholas was the only musician who used sounds physically from the desert. So one of my collaborators who was on the trip, Hiba Ismail, she created a very extensive sound archive of sounds that were recorded whilst we were making the film. The second section was scored by Felicita. They wanted to, you know, score um, the entire piece just using sine waves and they're kind of varying um, there's like bass all the way up. I think what's interesting about Felicita's score is sounds are really kind of spatialized and bounce around the room. And there's this kind of dissonance between what's happening in the bass sine waves to the melodies that you're hearing on top that kind of move your body between the space in um, quite a specific way. The third was scored by Yawning Portal. 
you know, it's kind of their music is, does this thing where it's like on a constant, it's constantly rushing. But then there are moments of even like the kind of moments of relief, I think it's still very um, like ecstatic. And the fourth was scored by Sega Bodega. Sega Bodega's score was, you know, he was really thinking about like this loop that would just keep on um, like happening throughout and just kind of adding sequences and then like stripping them away uh, again. But it's really just based on this concept of a loop. I, I didn't feel comfortable with putting language or words in, in the film. You know, I think when you're dealing with some of these paintings, they're like s between six and 12,000 years old. You know, what could you possibly say? <laughs> um, but sound is a narration in itself, you know, and it, it can be more powerful. I think when I first saw this space, I just immediately felt like the ceiling was the only place the film could exist on. You know, what I was trying to do was take the audience as close to that space as possible. I think the, the way that the, the work is installed, like, you know, you walk in, you're in this completely black room and the room disappears and then you're just kind of confronted with this place and you're completely immersed in it. And I think lying down, that also kind of helps you to physically be able to remain. That's an important factor in why ask the audience to lie down it's so that they might stay for long or, or l like lose themselves in it. And I think this kind of environment definitely feels the same as or the closest thing to my experience of that space, which was like not knowing where I was going or like how to navigate. It's really like mirroring that, that experience, walking in and just kind of going. Like I think with the installation, I was really, it was really important for the audience to also maybe be a part of that experience. I really like thinking about like, what does it mean to be at the mercy of someone else and how you, you have to surrender, actually. The experience of um, being in the desert and walking through that space, we never turned around, you know, we were just constantly like going forward, not knowing where we were going or like what would happen next. And there was really this question of like, what are we looking for? I feel it was an undercurrent in the experience of being there and the experience of shooting the film. Like, what are we waiting for? And you know, that's kind of happening in real time as you're going, so you're walking and you're asking this question. It was really interesting seeing how different people reacted to that space, because it does that very question, like, what am I looking for, is something fundamental, I think, that all of us question in our daily lives. And I think, you know, of course, this is like a very specific and quite extreme way of asking those questions physically. What the desert does to you um, is forces you to confront this question, actually, because there's no distraction.